I love anime. I love slice of life anime. I love shonen. I love thriller and horror. I enjoy the wacky zany fun that could happen via the art form and the interesting stories the various shows can tell via the medium. And I love TTRPGs, as you also know. The amount of flexibility, variety, and potential to tell endless stories is awesome. And one would think I enjoy anime tabletop role-playing games like Big Guy Small Mouth, Sword World RPG, The Code of Shoujo and Shonen, Golden Sky Stories, Shepard, and the list goes on. And I do, I very much do. But I have a big problem with anime TTRPGs. Anime tabletop role-playing games are poorly misunderstood. So, today I'll be discussing why I think anime tabletop role-playing games are misunderstood and why we might need to rethink our perspective on the matter. But before we can outright answer the question, we need context and understanding of what does an anime tabletop role-playing game look like. First, let's define what other TTRPGs might look like. What do you think a fantasy tabletop role-playing game looks like? Is it the sword and sorcery? Are it things like dungeon delving and finding treasure? Is it exploring a world filled with unique and awesome species, monsters, NPCs, and fantasy era-esque things, tropes, and topics? Now, what do you think defines a superhero taped up RPG? Is it the heroic actions? Is it the overtop powers? Is it the political drama? Is it the drama of being a superhero in a normal quote-unquote world? So, thinking about all of those other genres of TTRPGs, you have an idea of what a fantasy tabletop role-playing game might look like, i.e. Thugs and Dragons, or what a superhero tabletop role-playing game might look like, i.e. Masks. But what does an anime tabletop role-playing game look like? Maybe it's the art style? Well, no. While many anime do indeed share similar art styles generally, they can and do look very different no different than, say, any other art form. Just because someone does graffiti in a different place does not mean that graffiti will look exactly the same in another place. So, maybe it's the themes and genre that it covers. Well, yeah, but there also are a variety of anime-based tabletop role-playing games that cover different niches and needs and genres. But does that fully encompass anime and tabletop role-playing games when you say an anime tabletop role-playing game? I would say no. The issue I face of anime tabletop role-playing games isn't the medium itself, but the fact that we pigeonhole anime TTRPGs to be one specific thing, a genre, when anime isn't a genre, it's a medium, it's an art form, if anything. So my problem with anime tabletop role-playing games is that they assume anime is a genre, when really, I'd say anime is a medium. An example of this is Anime 5e. Anime 5e includes races, classes, and attributes you might see in shonen and seen in anime. The example is the slime, fairy, and parasite race are all typical tropes from popular isekai as seen in anime. Like any isekai anime, ReZero, Reincarnated as Slime, etc. I could go on and on. Or the well-known parasite anime and manga by Hitoshi Iwaki. Or the example of classes that reference a wide variety of genre-specific anime such as the isekai student, the magical girl or guy references, or the pet monster trainer, which is a quite frankly literal reference from Pokemon. The trope for Anime 5v and subsequently BESM lean to shonen anime, which is in part because 5e is known for their grid-based research management focused combat. So it makes sense that 5e will lean into the shonen-like TTRPG genre. But this is one anime TTRPG. To say I like anime tabletop role-playing games or I want to play an anime tabletop role-playing game doesn't help because there are so many different kinds of anime or types of anime out there. Likewise with anime TTRPGs. Golden Sky Stories deals with the heartwarming adventures based in small town culture of Japanese life. Sword RPG is the epitome of fantasy anime TTRPGs if you want a truly authentic TTRPG made by Japanese creators, then this game is for you. Overarms is a love letter to anime and manga like Jojo's Bizarre Adventure or the Persona series. Lancer is peak tactical mecha TTRPG. You pilot powerful mechs and are faced with the socio-political drama of a world bound to inevitable and deadly war. That's literally just mecha anime from Gundam to anything like it. Or you have 
TTRPG is like made, which is literally a made TTRPG based off anime and Japanese culture. My point? When someone says they want to play an anime TTRPG, it's confusing and frustrating. I think it's not helpful to say that. Anime is not a genre as I've stated before. Anime tabletop roleplaying games, like TTRPGs in general, are not tied to one genre, despite the monopoly that 5e holds onto the industry. Anime TTRPGs can be whatever game you and your friends want, even games that aren't made to be quote-unquote anime tabletop roleplaying games. The question we should ask then is, what kind of genre game do you want to play? Now, I understand the reason people label their RPGs that way, aka anime TTRPG, is because of aesthetic, inspiration, and the fact that it's an easy way to convey information on their tabletop roleplaying game to their consumer base. That's all fine and dandy. Do that, because, well, RPG creators should make money and they should be able to afford their bills and everything like that. Just as a consumer slash a player and as a game master, make sure that if you want to play an anime tabletop roleplaying game, A, decide the kind of stories and themes relevant to your game and look for a system to explore that, B, hack a system to meet your weeby needs, or C, just put an anime quote-unquote aesthetic onto your game. For example, if you want to call the Cthulhu game with anime aesthetics, then you can easily create that in, say, a system neutral game or something along those lines. What's stopping you? Seriously. Some of the D&D. If you want to include isekai or reincarnation elements into your non-homebrew D&D game, you don't need Anime 5e to do that. Does this certainly help to change the experience? Yes, that's what homebrew is for. But if you just want to play vanilla D&D, then you can just include isekai or reincarnation elements without any of that extra stuff. So, yeah, I think there's a problem when someone says or asks, what anime TTRPG do you recommend? Rather, you should really ask, what game do you really want to play and what genre do you really want to focus on? Once you answer that question, I think you're on your way to finding an awesome game. In fact, I know a couple of pretty awesome games from Power by the Apocalypse games to basic role-playing that you should definitely check out if you're interested in anime or other kinds of TTRPGs. And as always, I'm your average everyday queer host, Blurdy Disposition. Hope y'all have an awesome day. Ciao!